All righty. Welcome to the first car podcast. Um, wow, it is 333 right now. Look at those fucking angel numbers. So this is going to be raw, one take, and uh, I don't really have a game plan for what's going to be discussed, but I kind of have like a general gist. Sorry for the angle. Um, I will figure out a better angle. This car was just not very uh, helpful in finding a decent angle. Right now I'm using my glasses. You know, I typically wear them. So anyway, let's get right into business. So I wanted to start this new kind of thing alongside the down bat to Chad um, vlog I'm kind of doing at this moment because posting just once a week is just, I just want to keep pumping these algorithms, you know, and I want to just have a lot more content out there. And at the moment, um, I'm finalizing school and that's going to be done in a couple weeks. So Um, I don't even know what I was saying that for. I kind of brain farted right there, but I've been struggling guys. I have been struggling, not only just, you know, recently undergoing some deaths in my family. I basically had two deaths last week, which was both unexpected, not no one even planned for anything to happen like this. And it's just been putting life into perspective even more. Not only about our mortality and that the care we need to have for our family. If anything, it, it, it's been a catalyst for all these things. Because I feel like so many families, so many people, at least the ones that have been affected. We were distant. We've been growing apart. Kind of. And we've only reconnected when it was kind of like forced holidays. or, You know what I'm saying? And there's just so much separation. So much going on. That I feel, you know, the universe, God, whatever, he just kind of um, unfortunately had to sacrifice a couple lives to be the catalyst that forces the family to understand the value of family. And like, guys, we got to take care of one another. We got to really check in with one another and like love each other, you know, because um, a lot of the time there's there's like, you know, I say I love you. I love you. But. Is it shown in your behavior? Is it really shown in your actions? It's unlikely. And another thing that the death has really exposed, especially when you go to wakes and funerals, is the fucking crocodile tears. There will be so many people. I mean, eventually we will all share a, you know, a death in our family, friends, whatever. And the moment that happens... There's two kinds of people. There's the good people that were in that person's life and then two, the bad. And I just fucking snapped my pen. That, that sucks. Um, <laughs> that fucking blows. I also had some notes here that I will get to. Um, so let me wrap up this point. And, you know, I feel like I didn't disrespect my grandmother because I didn't show her crocodile tears. Because... We didn't have that intimate connection in the sense of uh, we had a language barrier. She just was 100% Portuguese. I'm 100% English. So there was always that very... I couldn't I couldn't get to know her as a human being because I couldn't speak to her. And so I felt it would, it would have been a disservice me trying to like... I feel like some people get to, into like a crying fit where someone's more sad than the other. Um, again, I'm not trying to talk shit to nobody. But it's just the guilt that people feel for being so cruel to that person that just died and now just all the guilt and shame that comes to them and now they're trying to make up for it with the amount of tears in front of everyone and it's just like we see through your bullshit we we know your behavior we know your actions like don't even try to play um that point didn't really have a point i guess i was just kind of stating it so now let me uh switch so now that this death shit is just it's it's just brought a, a a fresh perspective, especially to the insight I've gone into like a lot of families, um, especially the mom's best friend one. I, I've learned a lot, and man, I just really need to get my shit together. Like you know, just in their honor of those who have just passed, especially the mom's best friend who's my second mom. Like I just want to like now that she's kind of watching me above, I want to do so much more and be truly successful so that she can watch me in that kind of sense and um 
now this is getting into the the issue of uh, self image. Something I've been struggling with for the past, I mean, I guess my entire life, but more concretely in the past couple of years as I've, I, as I've been wrapping up college and I've been in a very nihilistic, apathetic, nihilist, all the fucking synonyms for that word. Um, it's something I've just been struggling with because I, I'm not sure what my fucking direction is. What, what's, the, what's the end goal? And... This is all coming to mind because yesterday I was listening to a Twitter space by Brute DeForce. And, dude, that guy can talk for like an hour straight with no filler words. The, the language he uses, the vocabulary, it's just, he's fucking, he's a modern day philosopher, just the way he was chatting. And I actually took some notes. Like, for example, he was saying to truly live from your source, which is your the inside of you, your your intuition. Also, I need to keep a, a check on the time because this is right before my boxing class. And for so long, I've just been, I've been outwardly searching for all of my answers. And I want other mentors and more successful people to always answer the questions for me. But again, the guy was just stating that you, you can't have other people ever answer the questions that you know you can answer within. And, it, and if you don't know your answer, you just need to sit on it and meditate because your mind, your subconscious mind over time will find the right answer for you. It's just something you need to contemplate. Again, where we lack critical thinking because we're so glued to our phones and we're swiping and swiping. And, I, and I'm a victim to this as well. And this is me projecting. I'm just, I, I consume so much data that my own uh, voice that's my brain that's my mind it's it's so fucking weak because all i hear is external stimulation i'm not thinking for myself and then this is where he got into self-talk mastering your self-talk to yourself is gonna is what's gonna allow you to propel forward because if you have that strong internal fortress that's within your mind nothing on the external can come in so that means, you know, your walls are fortified fucking five inches deep of steel, you know, whatever the strongest material is. But that's going to take years of cultivating this mental fortitude. Um, and the only way you can really do that is to suffer, endure that suffering and survive on the other end. And now you have this like this story to tell and you, you survived it. And th this is what builds a character. It's. It's never because you're always comfortable. It's like life is just truly just full of discomfort. And you enduring that discomfort, you coming out on the other side and you prevail. That's all the hero story shit. It's, it's never when you're comfortable. So, um, But what hit, what hit me the most about this self-image thing from this brute to force space was he said, you will never outperform your self-image. I'm going to say that again. You will never outperform your self-image. I'm not here to tell you guys how to change your self-image for the better. Right now, I'm, I'm a fucking... I'm just a student. I'm not rich. I'm nothing special. But I'm in this m mindset mode where I'm trying to really build my mind so that I have a solid foundation for the riches to come. Uh, before, when I had my success on TikTok and I went super viral, I had too much success too quickly that... It was so overwhelming and I never set a foundation of like discipline and a proper mindset that would sustain this incoming load because I was, I was 18. I was, it was fresh to me and you know, you crumble under all that success. It's like, I failed from too much success and then I completely shut down. So that's a, that's a story for another day, but you will never outperform your self image. And from the collective past years, I've just looked at myself so negatively so I just look down on myself and whatever space you're in mentally about yourself that is the maximum you can perform at which made so much sense the moment he just it was such a simple statement but it just hit so differently from his whole space and it really got me th and you know he was talking about authenticity um let me see all right I'm just gonna read from the notes here so I have live from the source you will never outperform your self-image 
The most successful people self-talk, so they talk to themselves, they do not listen to themselves. And that's a major, major difference. All these thoughts that are coming in and out of your head, you can listen to them or understand you are a conscious observer of each and every thought. And then you can pick and start analyzing this thought. The thought isn't you, it's just a thing floating in the abyss of your brain. And it's up to you to like look at it, analyze it, you can squash it, throw it out, or because you don't understand this conscious observer power that you have, you're fully immersed and now, now it takes over your whole entire brain and you think you are your thoughts and it's just, it's no. So this is why for your self image to start changing, you need to start changing your self talk towards yourself. And this is where you, penetrate your mind with just very positive affirmations about yourself um i mean even brute to force with starting a clown people who do positive affirmations and stuff it's just some shit i gotta do bro you know you you gotta cherry pick the advice from people because he could be like oh that's that's some pussy ass shit you don't need to meditate you don't need to do this you don't need to da -da -da -da. yes he's correct but you know if you're a down bad individual and you're really just you have no momentum you just need these little positive habits to build like momentum to build your confidence about yourself that you know when you say you're going to do something you can do it even if it's tiny 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 it's better than nothing um all right so let's keep going down he said to emotionally dominate yourself to come yeah like he's talking about control just complete control of your brain and then he said this which i really liked you need some bugs in your firmware all mad men win everything and so he was talking about how we try so, so hard to hide our imperfections from others that our, perfect, our imperfections are there in the first place to create our personality and who we are. And some people, their vices, their negative traits can actually be superpowers. But when we just, when we talk to ourselves with all this shame and guilt for like, you know, because we're not perfect, perfectly sober, we're perfectly um, moral, we're perfectly... Uh, you know, not doing nasty shit. You are killing a true piece of yourself in an, in a sense. And this is what he's talking about. Like every everybody's because we're all like robots. We're all programmed, and it's like each of us have our own bugs, like error codes. Everybody has it. And sometimes when you start looking at it as a weakness, that's what confirms it's a weakness but it's like there's so much about you that can always be flipped and it's just you have to play with perspective and this is where the self-talk like you forcefully think better things for yourself and over time your brain picks up on that and uh learns because all you're thinking all you it's so habitual the past 22 years of my life has just been like reintegrating the same habits 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 and you have to forcefully break that chain like cut that shit in half look at it and now you talk to yourself and you force yourself to do things differently i hope i'm making sense i hope i'm making sense um and he said you have to ruck up the mountain imperfect oh, dude, just everything he was saying in this this live was just hitting bro and um yeah and he was really just saying to ethically win at capitalism for you to have really an opinion on a, on about anything for no one to talk shit on your back, you just have to win this game of capitalism. Because one, it's the only fucking game in town. And when people can see you do not have an issue with generating wealth, maintaining it, and spreading it, and growing more of it. No one can fuck with you. But if, if you're slacking in that, re like, this is why people go ultra minimalist and they want to become monks. is because they're failing to, to win in our society. You know, they start doing all this extra bullshit because they suck at making money. But money is what runs every transaction in the world. Like, there's no free lunches at school. Somebody has to get money, put it, and then now there's a value exchange of some kind. All governments need money. All religious institutions need money. Everything needs money to function. Everything, everything. And so for you to really have an opinion on shit, he was just like, bro win at the game and then you can go be a monk minimalist and do whatever the fuck you want like people are they're trying to do all these things that are inauthentic to them in place of having to you know the only game everyone's playing here is the capitalism game it's obtaining wealth and then hopefully maintaining it and you take care of your family up until you fucking die right 
Um, yeah, so th this is, you know, for, for the freedom I want in life, it's going to come from financial freedom. Financial freedom will give me location and time freedom. And this is like the overarching mission I have is chasing freedom, true, true freedom. It's just, I have freedom of choice. I have freedom to be anywhere I want. I have freedom to do things at any time, whenever I want, you know? Um, so again, I just wanted to kind of wrap it up and say, I feel like I've just been kind of inauthentic with the self-image I've been trying to cultivate and craft. So much of the identity I've been trying to write, I, I, it, I feel like I'm gonna look good in front of everyone else because you know I'm fit, I'm doing this, I'm making this kind of money, I'm doing these habits. Like, and an example I'll use is you know I was like, oh, I'm gonna prioritize learning chess. I think chess is cool and all, but is it really something I'm super passionate about? No, I I think it looks cool that I know how to play it and I can like checkmate you, but it's high key inauthentic about me because I grew up playing like. The, the best video games ever you know growing up and now i just jump to like chess and this is my new video game alternative like and like i want to be like an athlete i want to be running i want to i mean i'm doing boxing which i enjoy but now i want to be lifting i want to do bike like i'm stretching myself thin cultivating a new self-image and the thing that brute was talking about was like truly being authentic, truly true. And all madmen, they, they succeed in life, like I said earlier. And they win because they're truly authentic. Even with all their vices and addictions, they don't make their bed in the morning. They don't take cold showers. They don't meditate. They don't journal. They don't this and that. They just get the fucking shit done. And man, I'm just like, I'm running around in circles just... I'm like, what am I crafting? And it, you know, so this is just me. I don't have my answers yet, but this self image thing I just realized is so crucial after he said, you will never outperform your self image. What I think is possible for myself is the ceiling I've set for myself. So if I believe I can surpass it, then I believe I can surpass it. Does that make sense? But if you believe you cannot, you cannot. Like, I don't know. Does this make sense? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it, if I just sound like an idiot, but yeah, man, self image. It's, it's shit I'm working on, especially with the maxi pro course. And I've been like doing the affirmations I have to listen to and da da da. And I'm just like, fuck, I just really got to zero in on an authentic Cisco. Cause I want to be happy with myself, you know, but I wake up every day, like angry with myself or upset. I'm not doing X. I'm not doing Y. I'm not doing Z. And it's like, damn, Cisco. Again, the self-talk he was talking about. I have to talk at myself and I have to respect that I'm an imperfect person and I can't beat myself up so much for these habits I'll never be perfect with. And so I'm just, I'm trying to realign into a, a solid direction where I work within reality. I'm accepting of it. And I'm not trying to create an unrealistic expectation for myself constantly because I will always fail to reach it. And I'm trying to be this perfect person that I wake up every day at the exact same time. I have this exact time block schedule. And it's like, that isn't me, bro. Like, I'm such a go with the flow. But maybe it can be me, you know, because I'm already saying I'm not this kind of person. But I, at some point, there's like this, this piece with your personality that it's changeable in some aspects that are not. So it's like, it's a delicate dance and a fine line between how am I going to remain authentic while still being able to change in a productive and a positive manner, you know? Um, so, you know, that, that's just honestly, this podcast is kind of detailing a struggle I'm having. I'm having a self image problem and I'm very ambitious. I have big things that I think of for myself. Um, but I keep thinking too large, too big that it's, it's an overwhelming mountain. I want to already climb Mount Everest, but I've never even climbed, you know, just like a tiny mountain that's one hundredth the size, you know, but it, or it's like, you want to run a marathon. You can't just run the 26 miles out the gates. Like 
No, dude, let's start running a mile, a mile, a mile, and then you then you do the first, you do your 5K first. You do, like, a bunch of 5Ks, which, what is, like, three to five miles only? Just do a 5K, 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 and then you've warmed up enough that you start increasing that. So, me speaking out loud, telling myself what I need to do. Again, live from the source. So, I guess me kind of verbalizing. This is like a little therapy session, no cap. But I, you know, with these videos, man, I'm at least creating and I'm speaking. I'm finally verbalizing what's in my, sitting in my brain because I don't do this shit. I just keep consuming, consuming, consuming. So, all right, guys, my boxing class is going to start in seven minutes. So I need to get the fuck out of here. Thank you so much for watching. We kept a, good, a decent time, 20 minutes. Um, uh, I'm going to have like better focused topics. This was just uh, pretty random. I think I'm going to call this self-image. Not that I really helped anyone with their self-image. It was kind of me just crying about mine. But hopefully there was some good shit in there. I do plan on doing this way more. I just need to have a raw sit-down video post, you know. And then just keep doing them. So. I'll look this over, see if it was good, and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I publish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I appreciate y'all. Um, let's see, let's see. Some YouTuber shit. Please subscribe, like, and comment. You know, do all that shit. Let me know. Follow me on the Twitters, the Instagrams. It's all in the link. Hoobie, who, H-O-O -O dot B-E slash Cisco. It's the website. All right. Deuces. Time to... Look, look, look at this. Look at my knuckle. This is so sensitive, so I hope it's not going to... It's going to hurt. I'm going to wrap this motherfucker just double this time. So hopefully we have a good boxing sesh. All right. Thanks for watching. Adios. Bye.